Bundle up. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. That you are here. That life exists and identity. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. That the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. What will your verse be? Hi, I'm John from The Art of Narrative. Today we're going to go over a simple seven step process that you can use to write a basic poem. The seven steps are, number one, brainstorm and free write. Number two, develop a theme. Number three, create an extended metaphor. Number four, add figurative language. Number five, plan your structure. Number six, write your first draft. And number seven, read, reread, and edit. Now, let's go into each step in depth, and if you're feeling up to it, you can plan and write your own poem as we go. Step one, brainstorm and free write. Before you begin writing, you need to choose a subject to write about. For our purposes, you'll want to select a specific topic. Later on, you'll be drawing a comparison between this subject and something else. When choosing a subject, write about something that you feel passionately about. Your topic can be something big like love or a specific thing like a person, place, or thing. A subject can also be something that you struggle with. Don't get bogged down by all the options. Just pick something. Poets have written about topics as simple as dogs and cats. Once you have your subject in mind, you're going to begin free writing about that subject. Get out a sheet of paper or open up your phone or your laptop. Start writing everything that comes to mind about that subject. I like to get an index card and write my subject in the middle and then around that subject I'll write branching or connecting ideas. And this is a process called mind mapping. And it's an awesome way to brainstorm during the writing process. So just write anything that comes to mind about your subject. Keep on writing until you've exhausted all your ideas and nothing more comes to your mind. Another technique is to set a timer and write until the timer goes off. Don't worry about things like spelling, grammar, form, or structure. For now, all you want to do is get all your thoughts down on paper. Step two is developing a theme. What is the lesson that you want to teach? Poetry often has a theme or message that the poet would like to convey to the reader. Developing a theme gives your writing purpose and focuses your efforts. Look back at your free writing and see if a theme or lesson has developed naturally, one that you can refine. Maybe your subject was your pet and you noticed that you talked about your love for animals and the need for, to preserve the environment. Or maybe you wrote about how to properly care for a pet. Your theme doesn't need to be new or groundbreaking. A theme only needs to be a message that you would like to convey. Something that you believe in, something that you're passionate about. Try writing the theme by finishing this statement. The lesson that I want to teach my readers about my subject is blank. An example of this would be, I want to teach my readers that spring days are lovely and best enjoyed with loving companions or family. Step three is to create an extended metaphor or compare your subject to another fun-like thing. Now you want to compare your subject to something it seemingly has nothing in common with. When you directly compare two unlike things, you're using a form of figurative language called a metaphor but we're going to take this metaphor and extend it over more than one stanza. Doing this will create an extended metaphor. By the way, a stanza is a group of lines that forms a unit, kind of like a paragraph. Using a metaphor will reinforce your theme by making your poem memorable for your reader. Your metaphor should reinforce your theme, so if, if you want to talk about the love for family or friends, then compare them to something like sunshine or a calm lake things with a positive connotation. This metaphor conveys your poem's central message. Step four is to add more figurative language. Make your writing sound poetic. Figurative language is a blanket term that describes several techniques used to impart meaning through words. Figurative language is usually colorful and evocative. We've talked about one form of figurative language already, metaphor or extended metaphor, but here are five other forms of figurative language that you can choose from for your poem. 
Number one, a simile or a comparison of two unlike things using words like or as. An example of this would be Frank was as giddy as a schoolgirl to find a $20 bill in his pocket. Number two would be a personification or giving human characteristics to animals or inanimate objects. Frank's car engine whined with exhaustion as he drove up the hill. A third one would be hyperbole when an author exaggerates a claim for emphasis. Frank was so hungry he could eat an entire horse. A fourth would be an allusion or when an author references another text, historical event, or person in their writing. Allusions can be direct or implied. Nearing the age of 85, Frank felt as old as Methuselah. And lastly, we have alliteration, or when an author repeats the same letter sound at the beginning of two or more words, like in Frank fretted as he frantically searched his forlorn apartment for his missing ficus tree. There are a ton of other types of figurative language, but those are a few of the common ones. Pick two out of the five I've listed to include in your poem, or use more or all of them if you like. Step five is plan your structure. How do you want your poem to sound and look? There it is. I don't know, but I can go. Do it, poetry is told. Limp, 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 right, limp, 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 right, limp, limp. If you want to start quickly, then you can choose to write a free verse poem. Free verse poems are poems that have no rhyme scheme, meter, or structure. In a free verse poem, you're free to write without rules. If you'd like to explore free verse poetry, you can read my article on how to write a prose poem, which is a type of free verse poem, and I'll link that in the description. However, some people enjoy the support of structure and rules, so let's talk about a few tools you can use to add a form to your poem. The first one is rhyme scheme. A rhyme scheme refers to the pattern of rhymes used in a poem. The sound at, e at the end of each line determines the rhyme scheme. Writers label words with letters to signify rhyming terms, rhyming words, and this is how rhyme schemes are defined. Here's an example of a couplet or an ABAB rhyme scheme from, the, and from this excerpt of Robert Frost's poem, Neither Out Far Nor In Deep. The people along the sand, A all turn and look one way, B. They turn their back on the land, A. They look at the sea all day, B. A stanza is another way to structure a poem. A stanza is a group of lines placed together as a single unit in a poem. A stanza is to a poem what a paragraph is to prose writing. Stanzas don't have to be the same number of lines throughout a poem either. They can vary in length as paragraphs do. Group similar ideas in your poem by stanzas. Another thing you could use is line breaks. These are breaks between stanzas in a poem, and they help create a rhythm and set stanzas apart from one another. Line breaks are a powerful visual signal to the reader, especially when coupled with stanzas that vary in length. Take a look at this example of how Gwendolyn Brooks uses stanza length and a single line break to signal to her reader the theme of her poem, Speech to the Young. I'll give you a hint, look at the bottom stanza. There are a lot of other tools you can use, but those three, rhyme scheme, stanzas, and line breaks, are all you need for this simple poem. Step six, write your poem. It's time to combine your figurative language, extended metaphor, and structure elements. This is the part where you take the reins. No one can write your poem but you. However, here are a few things to consider that might help guide you. Compare your subject to something else by creating an extended metaphor. Try to relate a theme or a simple lesson for your reader. Use at least two of the figure of language techniques that we already talked about. Create a rhyme scheme for your poem. A simple couplet or ABAB scheme would do the trick. And write at least two stanzas and use a line break. You can make them even lined or play with the length of stanzas as a way of, or play with the length of your stanzas as a way to illustrate your theme, like in the poem Speech to the Young. If you still need some help, I'll link two classic examples of an extended metaphor poem in the description. The first is Hope is a Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson, and the second is The Rose That Grew From Concrete by Tupac Shakur. You can use these poems as model texts. Read over them, 
determine what two unlike things are being compared and for what purpose. Ask yourself, what is the theme that the poet is trying to convey and what techniques can you steal from this poem? Anyway, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Step seven, step seven, read, reread, and edit. Read your poem and edit for clarity and focus. When you are finished, read over your poem. Do this out loud to get a feel of the poem's rhythm. Have a friend read your poem. Edit for grammar and spelling. If you're alone, you can use a free editing software like Grammarly or Pro Writing Aid. Now, in poetry, you can stretch or flat out break grammar rules, but you need to do it with a purpose. You can also ask your reader what they think the theme of your poem is to determine if you've communicated it well. Once you've collected some notes, you can rewrite your poem. Remember, all writing is rewriting, and this editing process will probably take longer than it did to write your first draft, but it will be worth it in the end. Don't skip the editing process. Okay, that's the final step to completing a simple, extended metaphor poem. With one poem under your belt, I hope you have the confidence to continue writing more and more poetry. But that's all I've got for you today. Check out the description if you want to read a longer article I wrote on this over at my blog, theartofnarrative.com. I also have a lot of other articles about poetry there as well. And if you like this kind of content, please give us a like and subscribe. We'll be linking a lot more of it in the future. Until then, keep writing. Bye-bye.